Are you struggling to turn your Figma designs into an interactive framer website? Well, you're not alone. In this video, we'll use two methods to convert the Figma design into an interactive framer website. First, we'll build everything from scratch. And second, we'll use a plugin and see if this plugin is capable to do all the work in just some clicks. By the way, I'm Bhupen, a web designer with more than three years of experience. And on this channel, I dive deep into no-code design with tools like Framer and Webflow. If you want to level up your design game, hit the subscribe button and let's learn together. In the first method, we'll build everything step by step inside Framer, gaining full control over the layout, responsiveness and interactions. So let's dive into it. This is the screen that you will see when you create a new Framer project. First, we'll change the fill color that matches the Figma file. Now let's move on to Figma file and copy the fill color. Now let's paste it in Framer. First let's observe some things about the Figma file. It has a width of 1160 pixels. So this means that the content on the website will be constrained to a maximum width of 1160 pixels. So we'll first start building the navigation bar. Now I personally prefer using pre-built navigation bar for the framer and then customizing it as per my project needs. Because this will save me some time in creating tablet and mobile variants from scratch. Now observe that the design has logo on the left, links in the middle and sign up button on the right. First let's create a stack which will act as a placeholder for the sign up button. In this placeholder stack, create another stack which will be our sign up button. Now let's add the text in the button. Now we'll copy the style from Figma file. Now let's move to Figma file and copy the background color. Here you go and now we'll copy the text color. And done. Now you can see that the corner has a radius. So we'll copy the corner radius from the Figma file and paste it in the Framer. I am using Adobe font FreightSense Pro here. If you have seen my previous video, then you will know that there is no direct way to use Adobe fonts in Framer. Either you have to use CSS properties using custom code or you have to locate the font file on your machine, which is in fact a hidden file. So both these methods are an inconvenience. Although there are a lot of fonts in Framer, you can also add fonts from FontShare, which has a beautiful collection of fonts. And there's also an option to add custom fonts, but I personally prefer Adobe fonts. Now let's do the same for the links too. Now copy the styling of text from Figma to Framer. Now let's add the logo. We have added the logo the links and the sign up button, but the layout is all off. So now let's correct the layout so that it's responsive and accurate to the Figma design. First we'll change the distribution to space between. And of course delete the bottom line. Now we'll delete the fill color of the navigation bar because the navigation bar on the design is in fact transparent. We have achieved the basic layout of our navigation bar, but this is not responsive. So let's make it responsive now. The maximum width of the desktop variant should be 1160 pixels, which is like Figma file. Since the navigation bar is transparent, we will fix the width of the navigation bar and add a padding of 20 pixels on the left and right side. Note that this method is only applicable when navigation bar is transparent, 
But if the navigation bar has a fill, then this method is not applicable. Then what you will have to do is make a stack, then put all the content inside the stack. And then you will have to make a maximum width constant on that stack. Remember when you are trying to create a website from Figma design, try to imagine everything in boxes. A box next to a box inside a bigger box. And these boxes in Framer are stacks and in Webflow they are flexbox. Now to optimize its variant for mobile, we'll add the sign up button in the link stack too. And in fact we'll make it hidden in the desktop variant. Then make it visible in the mobile variant and hide the sign up button that we originally created in the desktop variant. Now we'll style these mobile variants. Now we have completed our navigation bar. Let's start with the hero section. You can either drag a pre-built section or just create a frame and then convert it to vertical stack and name it as hero section and change the height to one viewport. We want the hero section to cover the whole screen. So what we'll do is make the width to fill. Now we'll export the background picture from Figma and change the fill of the section to the background picture. Now let's add a stack and the stack will be holding all the elements of the hero section. Now change the width of the stack to 1160 pixels as per our Figma design and change the background as transparent. Now create a stack and in the stack we'll add the world tour icon. And now do the same for others like heading, subheading and the button. Remember to style them exactly like the Figma design and change the alignment to left align. Now change the height to fit content and add padding and gap according to the Figma design. Note that the navigation bar is transparent but it's not overlapping with the hero section like we have in our design. So let's change the position to absolute so it can overlap with the hero section content. Now add the spacing of 30 pixels from the top to the navigation bar which is the same as the Figma design. And now for the sponsor section, create a vertical stack and make its height fixed and width will be set to fill. Now create a stack which will hold the heading of this section. Export the heading from Figma and add it to the stack. Now create another stack and add the logos in this stack and change the distribution to space between. Now adjust the spacing in its parent stack, same as the Figma file. Now let's quickly add some basic animations. I will not get into too much details about animations here. But if you want me to create a dedicated video on animations, then drop down a comment and I'll make sure to start working on that soon. First let's add some hover animations on the navigation bar. Now let's quickly add some subtle appear animations on the hero section. So this is a basic step-by-step -step process of converting Figma design to Framer website from scratch. Now I'll show you how to use a plugin which converts Figma designs into Framer websites and we'll see if this plugin is able to do all the work in just some clicks. First we'll download the plugin. You can find the link to download the plugin in description. It's very simple to use this plugin. All you have to do is select the layers on Figma file run the plugin and paste the content in Framer. But it's not as effective as it looks. Let me show you. Suppose you try to copy whole content like this. Select all the layers, run the plugin and then paste on Framer. 
See the content is looking exactly like Figma file in terms of alignment and layout. But note that everything here is in frames and not in stacks. When you optimize it by converting them to stacks, you will have to align content, optimize layout and you are back to the first method. But this here will be even more difficult because it's always easy when you are creating things step by step because you have only one thing to worry about. Suppose if someone copy pasted the whole web page using this plugin, then you will be scratching your head trying to fix everything. Instead, there is a better way to use this plugin. Copy only the selective assets. Like when I'm creating the nav bar, I'll copy this sign up button using this plugin and then I'll paste it in Framer. So I don't have to spend much time in styling it exactly like Figma file. Do the same for hero section text. So you will have to spend less amount of time in correcting the font, vertical space, horizontal space and size of the text. And then you move on to adjusting the alignment, spacing and other things like we did in the first method. This is the efficient way to use this plugin. I personally do not use this plugin at all because this particular website design is very basic. But when it comes to creating complex websites with great animations, the time spent in styling the text and the buttons is very insignificant when it comes to spending time on perfecting the animations and the user experience. So if you can incorporate this plugin in your workflow and it saves time, then you can definitely use it. So there you have it your Figma designs converted to beautiful Framer website. Now, whether you go for a quick plugin method or build it manually, the goal is same, getting your designs to look and feel exactly like you imagined. But if you are confused between Webflow and Framer for your design projects, watch the video I've made on this topic. You can find its link in description and in the i button. If this video gave you any value, hit like, subscribe and share it with someone who's figuring out Framer too. And I'll see you in the next one.